Hmm. How's Twitch doing? Anyone? Anyone? Oh dear. Hmm. That's a bad start. This is probably not doing these regularly. <laughs> still see the logo on the ground so it's the stream back up on twitch okay that's good and now youtube says excellent connection oh dear i've got a green screen oh dear that is a shame. Twitch is still good. Okay, thanks James. Doing the old reboot. No, YouTube has had it, hasn't it? That's the end of that. <laughs> what is it showing? Um, thanks for those followers on Twitch. Um, yeah, if you're watching on YouTube, I don't know if you can hear me, but you might need to move over to Twitch because I don't actually know a way to solve this one now. That is a little bit concerning. I've never seen that before. I've had plenty and plenty of problems, but uh, first time we've seen just a plain green screen. So, yeah, uh, I might have to end that one. Um twitch how's twitch doing twitch is fine you should be showing green screen thank you watch your stream says switch to twitch thanks liana says twitch is it twitch it is for now anyway dual streaming caused issues for me in the past but it's been okay for you until now maybe try restarting youtube i've tried restarting youtube um yeah okay well welcome to all joining us on twitch this is gonna have to turn into a twitch stream i'm afraid Let me just put the right link in, and then we'll get going. Very quick to start up a Dash 8 Q100. It's, uh, it's not going to take us long to get going at all. Let me pin that. Right, I'll leave the YouTube sitting there for a little while. I doubt it's going to recover, but uh, there it is. <laughs> anyway, um, Twitch seems to be okay, which is good news. Right. Good. Thanks, Hayden. Thanks for joining us over on Twitch. Definitely being good afternoon to you. Um, <laughs> you missed a bit of chaos over on YouTube, but that's about it. Uh, so thank you all for joining us, uh, everyone here. So obviously on Twitch we have... Let me get this right. Uh, yeah, Tom Corwine, MSJN, Falco, good to see you. James Atkinson, thanks for joining us over on Twitch as well. Um, and Duke, well, thanks for coming along and uh, really appreciate it. Good to see you. Paddle bus, Twitch, it works. Indeed it does. Checkpoint, good to see you here as well. Thank you. Um, Liana E, I think I mentioned. Um, Chadders, thanks for joining us. Castle Gaming, Swiss Dunks, and uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. YouTube is shutting down. Ah, oh, that is frustrating. I suppose I can upload this later to YouTube if it all goes well but there we go so we're going to go with it on twitch right uh there we are we are in the 320 sim pilot manta livery q400 i think this livery looks really sharp on the the q400 i do like it um yeah ace Airstream. stream i will uh record uh, i'll take the video of this and stick it on youtube so if you're watching this later on youtube thanks for watching <laughs> um but yeah that's what we'll do so yeah i'm a big fan of the fly j sim q4 xp i used to fly the q400 and i really do like it um it's a uh, like i say yeah one of the best add-ons we've seen for x-plane hands down graphically it's great it's it's graphically on a par with many i would say microsoft flight simulator aircraft obviously the sim around it isn't but the actual aircraft i think they they've they're at that level the detail i mean just look at it look at the nose gear this is just it's just perfect really really great shows what can be done 
in X Plane as well. Um, and look at these reflections and things, you know, it's definitely, yeah, it's good stuff. Um, you've got these little exhausts. I don't actually know what these exhausts are for. I think it's something to do with the avionics bay ventilation. But there we go. That's an ice detector. That's an angle of attack. These are pitos. Uh, so, yeah, all the usual sort of stuff. That's the forward sink drain. I think this would be an ADF antenna. Um, you don't actually have to know which every antenna is when you fly these aircraft because, of course, you don't spend much of your time looking at them. But there we go. Uh, Chroma key stream, yeah. Uh, James is in the Speedbird. Yeah, there we go. Excellent. We've got uh, Speedbird 999. Thanks very much for coming along, James. I hope you enjoy flying along. Quite a short flight today. Uh, we have a flight time of just, let me just check, uh, just over an hour, an hour and 12 minutes. Um, it's just to do with the, the timings I could get to, to stream today. Um, but longer flights to resume soon enough, I'm hoping. I have some 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 dates in mind, but I th reckon I can get a stream going. So, yeah, looking forward to that. Um, now, what do I need to do about this Twitch thing? Okay, that's all good. Yeah, so we'll do a cold and dark startup. The propeller idling gently there, pretty nice. Um, and then we will get going. So, uh, three shows in pilot says, Hi, do you still use and recommend the simple FCU autopilot thing? It looks like one doesn't need a 3D printer anymore. Kind of tempted to buy it if it still works. Is that true? I haven't seen that. So is simple FCU now available without a printer? Or are you talking about the new mini FCU? Oh, no, 3D printer no longer needed. Hardware and plastic studio assembly. I did not know that. I did not know that. Interesting. Um, yeah, I, I still have it. I haven't used it for a little while um, because I haven't been simming. So uh, I I thoroughly enjoyed my time. You can see my video on it, and basically it's up to you. Um, but there are obviously other other products coming to market over time now. So um, it's uh, it's going to be a case of yeah, what what do you think? I ha I've only used Simple FCU, put it that way. Um, but. Uh, yeah, I really enjoyed my time with the Simple FCU, certainly. And uh, I think um, it was, or it is a good, it's a good Airbus autopilot panel. There's no doubt about it. So I, I did like it. But uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what we see with like things like the Mini FCU, indeed. Um, good. Lauren V, good to see you. Lauren V says, wrapping up a little lunchtime session in, on Cleveland Center right now. Interesting Canadian domestic flight on Porter Airlines Cube 100s that is mostly controlled by Cleveland. Oh, there you go. Good old Q400s. Still out there, still around. <laughs> um, the reason that the propeller windmills like this is on the Q400 is it's a free turbine. So it's not actually connected to the engine like a piston propeller. It's just like a jet. It's like the fan on the, the A320 you see over there. So it's uh, it can just be blown by the wind. And it happens a lot on the Q400, more so, I would say, than jet aircraft. Because if there's any breeze across the airplane in particular, the bottom half is sheltered by the fuselage, but the top isn't. So you get a wind from the right, say, and it just blows the top around and it just accelerates this propeller so fast and then you just can't even get near it. And you just have to make do. So there you go. Um, thanks for all these follows. And James Cooper, thanks so much for the $10 tip. Really appreciate it. James says, no option for GBP, so have some dollar up <laughs> your well. Thank you so much, James. Really, really kind of you. Thanks for joining us over on Twitch. Really appreciate it. And thank you so much for the $10 tip. Very, very kind of you. Um, yeah, there's no super chats available here, I'm afraid. <laughs> so, uh, so that is um, that is what we've got for now. Um, but yeah, really, really, thank you so much. And uh, if Four Prawns is here, thank you to Four Prawns as well for um, for your support. But yeah, thank you, uh, James. Really appreciate it. Um, right, good. Jumping inside. Go on a dark airplane. Um, let me. I, did have the charts let me just check every tab is correct yep yeah, there we go so we're parked in montpellier this is the orbex montpellier uh, and we're going to taxi out and we'll figure out which runway we're going from actually let's do that now i did have the weather my x-plane still won't tell me the weather directly but it is 220 at nine so it's a southwesterly breeze hmm. interesting so it's coming from sort of over here effectively puts us onto runway 30 so we'll do a 30 right takeoff and let me just work out that weather. So that puts us with 23 degrees. It's a very nice temperature down here. And uh, 209 QNH of 1014. We are on Vatsim. I don't think there's any controllers around in this part of the world at the moment. No. No. So it's going to be pretty much up to us. Good. Good, 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 good. So let's load up the aircraft. Oh. So we're going to have. Let's take 62 passengers. And it's got some cargo in the forward hold. We're looking for a zero fuel weight of around about 
Let me just check what we had planned. We are going with 25 and a half tons. It's quite a high zero fuel weight. So we got a lot of passengers. There you go, 72. Don't want to go too high on it. There we go. Heavy, heavy for a dash this is. Um, good. Right. Fuel-wise, I need 3.3 tons of fuel. 3.3. And that is with an alternate fuel of 800 kilos for Leon, which is quite a way away from Basel. Uh, and that gives us 15 minutes. You can see weather's nice today. That should be good. So there we go. Now we go to load summary. Confirm load. Start loading. So passion's getting on. Now they wouldn't actually do that yet. We should actually get the airplane powered up. So we're going to do that the simple way. We turn on the batteries. Dead easy on the Q100. Yeah, YouTube has now. I've had to give up on YouTube, I'm afraid. So if you could mention to anyone on there, if there's anyone left, to head over here. <laughs> um, I can't really restart YouTube very easily without setting up a whole new stream, and that doesn't work very well. So I'm going to upload this later. Um, but there we go. So batteries on. You get the master warnings and I'm going to fire up the APU. Could do an APU fire test first. Fight test starts. Click all these warnings. Lots and lots of warnings flying the dash because it does not have any particularly good uh, flight warning computer inhibitors so it doesn't care what phase of flight it's in, it will just give you the warnings. This was the aircraft I was on before the 320. Indeed, James, yeah. So I flew this for a few years and uh, I enjoyed it. It's a, it's a great airplane to learn to fly on or to, you don't learn to fly on it, but to, to do your first job on. You have to really get an appreciation of uh, <laughs> keeping an eye on the airplane with this thing. Um, it doesn't look after you in the same way the Airbus does, no doubt about it. Uh, thank you, Leanna E, for the follow. A new Q400-based airline just launched in Perth. Next to there you go. Flex speed rates. Interesting. Right. AP is now available. Generator goes on. Clunk. Start to get some fans. And we'll turn on the screens. PFD. MFD. Get the co-pilot side. PFD. MFD. And we'll get the engine display on. We'll set the arc dues to both. Oof, getting some real frame rate hits here <laughs> uh, and let's just see what we've done so DC controllers on batteries on and we're on the APU generator anti ice can all stay off the engine uh, intakes are going to stay closed props off pitot and boot air norm windshield heat off that's fine exterior lights off uh, we're going to stay in feet obviously flight recorder on normal and we run the engine fire tests good and then we can test the cargo bottles Quite a confusing system this really um i don't remember if this is a test switch or an actual deploy switch so i'm not going to press it <laughs> lights are on we'll leave the dome light off apu is running get some bleed air uh, ignition in normal start switch and select switch are off the cabin pressurization is in normal we'll put on the tail and logo lights and the wing inspection and position lights eventually lights to arm that's what you'd have to have before the passengers go on certainly fasten seat belts on no smoking on test our cautions and all the others set it to bright oh bright that way then we're going to have the reset fan on I'll leave the bleeds off for now and that's it I wonder if the bleed air does this work do we need I think the bleed air APU just feeds directly so yeah that should be working now 80 generators on and that's the overhead panel pretty straightforward pretty simple Some more master warnings don't worry about those because those will trigger on and latch on just because we did the uh, the tests so that's all we get. Um, but yeah. Right. How's the interior modeling of this aircraft? Asks James. And is there a working toilet? This aircraft is fantastic. The interior modeling is super. I spent a lot of time in this airplane. 
and let's see if we can go through the door. The frame rate is partly caused by the scenery. Ridiculous. Just ridiculous. However, and I've said this before, the Q400, at least the ones I flew, did not have a uh, air pressure toilet. It was... Um, look at that. Since when do we get physics in these things? <laughs> uh, can we put the seat up as well? Quite important. Yes, you can. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not a, um, a pressurized toilet. So the flush there is actually just just uh, blue liquid, like a chemical toilet. It's not as fancy as the Airbus. They could even got a little flight attendant panel here, which can be used to mildly adjust the temperature. This is true of a lot of aircraft. You can they, This adjustment is only a couple of degrees. It won't actually make much of a difference, frankly. Um, you would have the boarding and lavatory lights potentially on. Mm. Measure it's not working, but that could be because I haven't set it up properly. I don't remember what power that panel needs, but there we go. Anyway, when I face that way, the frame rate really takes a hit. No toilet roll, though. I'd have to use the hand basin as a bidet. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Phoenix said, I never in a Q400. I never know inside and how it works. Q400s, yeah, they're quite interesting. Pro spent 10 hours in development to make the toilets work. I'm sure it took time, yeah. I'm sure it took time. What's the maximum speed on the toilet seat? Aerodynamics could be improved for sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's quite cramped, that little toilet as well. Um, let me tell you that. It's not as the same size as a 320 toilet. Look at that. So there you go. You heard that ding. And yet another example of the Dash 8's warning system. Internal baggage door. So that's open because this door... Sorry about the frame rate. Hopefully the switch hangs on. Um, yeah, this is actually an external cargo hold, as it were. So this door is not pressurized or anything, but it's, um, it's just, uh, a sealed, locked door, as it were. Look at this. Outrageous. Amazing. I forget how good this is until we get back into it. <laughs> um, it has a plushy toy in the back. It does indeed, Bunker. Yeah. What's the max speed? Uh, yeah, if you don't know that one. Good, 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 good. <laughs> Kenny Vala says, uh, this feels like a very simple and silly question. But when a pilot replies checked after the aircraft enunciates something like the radio altimeter, does it just mean acknowledged? Or I've seen checked and I confirmed I've seen the same or something similar? Great question, Kenny Wallop. So the phrase checked is not used by all airlines anymore. It used to be very common and it's gone out of favor a little bit. I'm just going to press on, by the way, on these FMSs. Um, but there we go. Uh, yeah, so the phrase checked is, in theory, you're, you're acknowledging something happening and you're saying, yeah, yeah, that's fine. I've checked it. I agree with it. Um, some airlines use it in response to checklists or in response to every call. So you could say 1,000 feet to go and then you might answer... Um, checked and then you might say uh, out and then they'll say checked and then they'll say you know or, or any combination of these things uh, flaps one checked flaps one you know in theory you're saying you've checked something whether it's I've checked that I agree with you and the FMA is the same or I've checked that uh, I think that that's the right thing to do at this point however its usefulness is debated and different airlines have different strategies for it so it's not always used by all airlines because there is an argument that by just saying checked and just making it a routine thing to say the same thing over and over then you're not really checking anything you're just saying it and it can become an automated response if you if you just constantly say checked on a flight deck all the time and if you see check 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 for everything then who knows who knows um, but there we go arguments both ways no doubt and airlines will perceive it differently and they'll have different reasons for what they're doing that's always the way in aviation Hello, Kags. Thanks for the follow. Right. Uh, no, so the most difficult part about remembering to fly this aircraft is this universal FMC. It is something else. Um, I'm going to struggle, and I do apologize. It knows we're in LFMT, which is good. We're going to LFSB. I thought it meant physically checked and confirmed that, for instance, the flaps are actually in a cooled-out position to speedways. Well, it may in some airlines. It, that's my point. It, it will really depend on what you're expecting it to be on that day <laughs> uh, or <sighs> yeah I mean some airlines that use the phrase checked will have a definition in their manuals of what you're actually what it means and when you should say it and when you may, must not say it you know physically checked and confirmed yeah because it could be from FMAs couldn't it so um, uh, okay you could say uh, okay 3000 feet set and then the other pilot could say checked 
So what are they checking? Well, they're checking you've set 3,000, I guess. Are they checking 3,000 is right? Or are they just checking that that does say 3,000? You know, that's what I mean. Bit of a difficult one. Good. So we're starting in LFMT before I get into a huge uh, debate about the semantics of using the phrase checked. <laughs> and we have agreed our departure runway. So let's see if I can remember how to do this. That was a bad start. It's, uh, it's data, I think. No, it's list. And that would be for the airways. Okay, so we got that bit. <laughs> uh, I just need to figure out how to put a departure in there. You'd never believe I flew this airplane. And we had to do this. You know, we had to load this up every time. I remember, I remember. So flight plan select menu departs there we go goodness me uh three zero right which means typing in number four this is i i don't know if the reason i don't like this fms is because it's this it's so different or whether it's because i don't like it because i think it is genuinely not designed in a way i find easy to use it could just be i'm not used to it because when i remember using it and not being so upset about it so <laughs> or not finding it's difficult i'm not upset about it but yeah anyway we're taking off by uh, November Gulf, which is an NDB over here, and then we're heading along our route. So, is there any restriction on these departures? I don't think so. Three zero right, which is the sixth November, November Gulf, sixth November, which is number fourteen, and none. Fine, flight plan. There it is. So let's just check it does make sense. We're going to take off. We're going to go three zero three to one point seven miles. Then we're making a right turn. And that's going to be onto 052. And then at 2,000 feet, we make another right turn, intercept the 052 to November Gulf. Not bad. From November Gulf. So we select it, list, and we go back to our chart. We're taking, oh no, we don't do that. We're doing direct. So forget that. I was all excited there. That was a big step being able to remember how to do that part, <laughs> which I only discovered back just now. Um, no, we don't need to do that either. Oh dear, this is embarrassing. There we go. Molen. For my first stream back, I really should have done the uh, <laughs> Airbus, didn't I? And then Mike Tango Lima. The only good news is I did update the database for this stream. So that's that's unusual for me <laughs> to manage that. So pretty happy about that. Oh, there we go. Ah, Viper says, I posted a sneak preview of the new version of my man delivery on Discord. Thanks very much. Let's take a look. This, yes, I need to... Uh, where has it been posted? Do, 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 do. Wow, they're very nice. Thank you very much. That is looking really pretty. Look forward to that one. Thanks, Viper. Yeah, upcoming livery there. Really, really nice. It's good fun. Need to take out the uh, TODIS for some flights, definitely. Uh, right, Mac Tango Lima, then we're taking an airway. Which you don't do like that. That's only how you do departures. I can't believe I managed this for so many years. Mac Tango Lima, list. Then we're taking Bravo 16. Plain language. No, airways, not plain language. From Molen. No, this is not correct. What have I done here? I need to go to the next point. List. Airways. Bravo 16. Which means number 3. How do I do that? Uh, just type in 3, I guess. And then we can leave in that. The Lima Tango Papa, number 5. This is such a strange system. I don't know how they came up with this. It, it, I, I don't, I'm not aware of any other... FMS that uses the system of typing in numbers for waypoints, but here it is. Um, yeah, so we're going to go airways again. We're taking the November 871, number 5. And we're going to leave that at Connell, number 5 again. After Connell, we take another airway, Zulu 59. Uh, to Limel, number 2. I would say this is my. And then that's our arrival. So then we can put in our destination of Lima, Foxtrot, Sierra, Bravo. 
which is Baal Mulhouse. And we go here, we go menu, arrive. Then I'll eight kilo from my three three. Not unreasonable to expect three three. Number two. None. And we'll do the RS Zulu 33, number four. Via Altic. We're coming from the west, aren't we? Good. There we go. We have a route all the way through. Good. Good, good, good. That's good. Th uh, thanks, Viper. Yeah, so this is a good aircraft, isn't it? So, yeah, nice to see some liveries coming for it. Uh, X-ray Yankee or Zulu approach asks Desert FX. Um, it's Zulu is the most common. X-ray Yankee by ATC. They're supposed to name the Zulu the Zulu because it's the one they use the most often. Why that is, I don't know. I'm sure there's a reason. Oh, probably historical, but I don't know. Um, so yeah, Zulu is the most common. So that's why I've gone with that there. Good stuff. Right, let's start loading in some weights. Just see how we're doing. The aircraft should be fully loaded now. It's loaded. Yep. So there are our numbers, so let me just write these down, 24, 6, 3, 9, because we have 76 packs, um, and we've got a map tower, 21.07, okay, let's see if we can get this right, this is always a nightmare, load summary, no, that's not what we've got, that's what we've got, all right. There you go, select first, 76. Ah, now how do you do the zero? I genuinely don't remember. Hmm. What is the average weight? This problem comes up a lot when I fly this add-on. I don't remember what the assumed weight was. Something like if we just put in eighty eight. Why can't I do that on here? Every passenger weight, there we go. Eighty eight. Eighty eight. Cargo something like because you're never that accurate with the uh, the passenger weight, remember. Uh, we've got seven nine two. Gotta do that every single time. 792, 0.25, 2.80, which is about what we wanted. Um, it's a little bit heavier than this, so the average is obviously wrong. But that's fine. Um, and fuel on board, 3.3. Or, of course, what we should do is put this onto the system page. And then I can press fuel. There's a 3295. Maybe we can be that accurate. And an Airbus probably wouldn't bother, but I suppose this airplane burns a little less fuel. So there we go. James, thank you so much for your $5 tip. Really appreciate it, James Cooper. James says, would you consider doing an Airbus H145 video with some of the action pack scenarios? So those are my favorite things I've seen in the um, helicopter that Hayden, Hayden was so keen for me to fly. And that is one of the reasons I want to fly it because that looks so great. Um, and I have had a go on someone else's sim, but... I, uh, so yeah, that's something I'd like to do. Uh, I know, and I keep saying that, and I, I'm, I'm, I, I really would like to get more streams done. I really would, and I can only apologise, like I say, that it's taken this long to to get this stream out. Um, but if we can get into a more regular flow, and I'm used to streaming and getting the flights done, then we can do the the sort of the different things, the extracurricular work, as it were. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I would like to do that. I would like to do that. I'd like to do DCS. I'd like to do helicopters. I'd like to do more aircraft. I still haven't done the MD-11. I mean, it's uh, yeah, it's amazing how time just vanishes. <laughs> it really does. But there we go. So hopefully, hopefully one day. Uh, right. Also fuel 800s or 807. I guess we're going to be really accurate here. Hold fuel, which I'm going to put as final reserve 664. Extra. Well, I don't need any extra. So we have 1.4 of reserves, 3.3 on board. There we go. Next, I don't think matters. That's after engine start. That's after engine start. That's all to do with other things. So we've got our flight plan. We've loaded in the weights. I think that's it for the FMS on this. 
And I'm just going to go over here and go Master Crossfill from MFS. <laughs> FMS1. Nick says helicopter's really hard. I really sure. Yeah, that's it. I need to figure out the controls for it as well. MSJN says, now I'm curious how often pilots get annoyed at their plane in real life. It does happen. Depends what it's doing, but you can imagine if you're tired and you're in a dash eight and it's dinging at you all the time. But then I must say that didn't ever annoy me when I flew it. Um, you get used to a lot of these quirks and it's quite a risky strategy getting annoyed at the thing that you're flying around because, you know, the success and safety and ease of our day out are all dictated entirely by this aircraft or a lot of them are dictated heavily by, I should say, this aircraft uh, and the way we interact with it. So getting annoyed at it is uh, a way just to make yourself miserable, <laughs> put it that way, <laughs> uh, for, for literally no gain because it's not going to help anything. Um, and the aircraft, I'm sure they can tell and they will bite you if you get annoyed at them. They know, they don't like it. <laughs> it's disrespectful to, uh, to, to dislike your aircraft. James says, our local air ambulance uses the H145, so the action pack would be great fun with the heli med scenarios. Yeah, that would be that would be really good. Yeah, good idea. Thanks again for the tip, James. Really appreciate it. So, let's just put our course bar onto. We're taking off from. We decided runway three zero right, and we're not really using any. Um, no, well, actually, that's not true. We're going straight to the number golf three five four NDB. So let's put that in. Five, four, and this is the magic of this, the best radio system I've ever used, and I maintain that. I absolutely love it. Three, five, four. There we go. So, that is our NDB, and we can display the NDB needle if we go down here, and I'm going to have it on ADF1, and then I have this on FMS2. So that points to the next FMS waypoint. This will point to the NDB. I'm not worried about the course bar particularly. I know I'm making a right turn and essentially going to track 052 and eventually, um, I suppose we could put 052 on. Zero five two, and then we're going to go nav source, FMS one. There it is. Heading. We're taking off from runway three zero. So let's put that on to heading three zero. Good. And stopping at an altitude of, it doesn't particularly say, it's above 2,000 feet, then the member golf, clearance will be from air traffic. Let's just go for 5,000 feet initially. And remember, modes in this, we must always have out cell. So I'm going to press the go around buttons to bring up the flight directors. We get wing level go around. I'm going to press heading and I'm going to press out cell. And that is roughly what we want. Let's set that Q&H now. Not the speed bug, sorry. Q&H of 1014. Please don't do that. 1014, which is about sea level, which is correct for Montpellier and synchronized. Good. So if I put that back to the systems page by refreshing it, we get the electrics over there. You can see that we're not draining anything. That's good. Lauren says, when are you flying Spirit, Yellow, or Northwest Bowling Shoe? <laughs> I've never thought of that. <laughs> to Detroit. Yep, that's on the cards. Q400 was next on the list. But uh, yeah, we, we can get into a Northwest or Spirit airplane, definitely. So Spirit Detroit based? Lauren says, don't have a moment to look away when I'm working a whole center toe down, even a fairly small one like Cleveland. Yeah, I bet. I bet it's busy. Leanna says, old joke about Airbus pilots. The new pilot will question, what is it doing now? The experienced pilot will say, oh, it's doing it again. <laughs> I haven't heard that one. I've heard many like that, but that one's slightly, that's that's quite good. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. <laughs> We're not allowed to say that, by the way. The phrase, uh, what is it doing now? That's uh, that in, in a sim check, you'd get in trouble for that because you should know. And if you don't know, you should stop it and do it yourself. <laughs> is the theory. Does this hatch open as well? Of course it does. I'm not sure what way I need to move it, the mouse, but I can see that it would if I knew what I was doing with it. <laughs> anyway, that's a ventilation hatch. You wouldn't tend to open that. You'd be very brave to open it just for ventilation. The windows don't open on the Q400, so like the 787, you have to have a hatch in the roof and the 747 um, because the, these windows at the side are sort of glued in. Quite good windows on the dash. Nice big panoramic view and just one bar. But um, yeah, that is uh, not going to open. <laughs> 
Good. I think we're pretty much there. I think it's time to go into the checklist. Reset fan on. External check completed. Alternate gear doors landing inhibitor switch. Down there. Up there. Close norm. Flight day preparation completed. Briefing completed. Force our checklist. Let's just see what else might we want to do. So APU's on. We don't need the bleeder anymore. I'm just going to turn that off. Um, I think we're pretty much ready to go. The lights are all on. Yeah. Okay. Circuit breakers checked. Passion signs on. Emergency lights arm. Anti-skids. I missed one. There it is. Anti-skids should be on. Let's run through our flow down here. We didn't do that. Doesn't matter what that position is in. We're going to go 104 on the standby oximeter. Gear is down. We have our three greens. Moving down, we have the FMS. We have the fuel control set to the middle. We got the fuel in our tank, so we know it's balanced. We saw it earlier. Engine control we don't need to fiddle with for now. Auto feathers switches are all off. The standby calm is off as well. Parking brake is on. Gas lock is on. The power levers should be in disc. There they are. Uh, and here's the condition levers set to fuel shut off flaps at zero trims are in zero you would have run a full test of those you've got aileron and rudder um, and then obviously pitch trim is on your yoke which i have hidden arc dues we've set up ourselves and transponder we can do later good i think that's about it um what we haven't done is performance of course now how do we do performance in this aircraft there we go we click there <laughs> perfect and that'll be for a flat five takeoff. That is indeed Nick and escape hatch. So that is what this is. This is a um, a way out of the aircraft. That's why it's there. It's not actually there for ventilation reasons. So if there's a problem and the flight deck door is mangled in a way that we can't move and move it out the way, then we would jump out this. And I think there's a rope to do that. Gosh, I don't remember. Maybe you have to just slide down. Maybe it's considered low enough. I feel like there should be a rope. <laughs> Certainly is on the Airbus, but there we go. <laughs> and there definitely was on the 747. Um, there's not a touchscreen. No, this is not a touchscreen on the real aircraft. That's just for the sim. You would get these numbers from your performance manual, and then you would press select, and then you can select through them and, and type each one in. Anyway, uh, good. So anti skid is now on. Fuel transfer is off and checked. Emergency brake pressure on. And then we can check the brake pressure over there. So park brake is pretty low, actually. But that's going to top up in a second. We can also... I think you need AC power for that. Um, but there we go. Power levers are in disc. Condition levers fuel off. Take off data reviewed. Start is approved. So let's just run through a little flow. So we put the beacon to red. Starts the flight data recorder. Then we're going to put the transponder on out. It would be on your squawk, obviously, if you had one. And oh, is that about it? Let's find out. Battery master main aux stabber battery are on. Door fueling lights out. Yep, and we have the fuel we wanted. AP bleed off. I think that's for electrical reasons. Anti collision red. Engines clear for start. Next is the after start checklist. The longest checklist you'll see for an after start. Ridiculous flow. That yeah, there is loads to do. But yeah, no problem. Let's go. So, simple start on the Q400s. Start switch to the engine you want. Can't remember if it's two or one. I'm going to go for two. Select light and start. Electrical start. So the, it's just literally the little um, drive generator whizzing round. Start spinning an H. As soon as we see an H there, we can start introducing fuel. That goes to the feather position. Fuel flow. ITT. RPM will gently accelerate to the feather. Sorry, distracted bot. Yeah, YouTube is not working for us today. Speedway says the ATR is incredibly easy to set up by comparison. Yeah, I do like the ATR. I like it a lot, actually. And there you go. Master caution, which is... I can't even remember. You see, it's, there's so many warnings. It'll be to do with something that isn't fully powered yet. And that's it. The engine's up and running in the feather position. This is a drive-off stand, so we'll just start both engines here and then take ourselves out onto the taxiway. So let's start engine number one. Select light comes on, press start. You can see that this um, duct temperature goes to zero when you press start. That's because it just loses power. The airplane has to shed a lot of load when it's starting engines. Hence, I think that's why the bleed air's off. It's too much power to drain from the APU all at once. But you can start this aircraft on batteries. Anyway, there's an H. Start feather. 
emergency fuel flow. This is the Orbex scenery. Yeah, I am sorry. Um, the YouTube one went really wrong. It's not, not intended to be like this, but that's what's happened, sadly. What's going on here? Put that start feather. We did get another caution. It's spinning around. It's given up. It's shut down. I took too long. So let's turn it off. Let's try that start again. So you also have to really carefully monitor the temperature on the batteries on the Q400. They rise and there is a limit on takeoff for a load and temperature to do with thermal runaway. So if you've drained the battery too much, then the load will be high and the temperature will increase and then you can't take off. It's easily done. Start. NH. Start feather. Fuel flow. There we go. Let's see ignition pretty soon. There it goes. Let's tune in Unicom. Oh, that panel's great. It looks complicated, but I still remember how to use it after all these years. Thank you, Antti, for the follow. Right, and that's it. Switch goes into the middle. So that light goes out. Let's see if I can get this flow right. So I don't think we do anything. Let's see. And there's a few things we should do first. Okay, right, we'll use the checklist. Center power, APU off. So we don't need the APU. We only have DC generators at the moment, but we can still shut down the APU. The airplane doesn't use much AC power, unlike the Airbus. Main bus tie can now go off, so we're going to separate the generators now because we trust them on their own. And it will be only turned on if we need to swap power over. Leader 1 and 2, let's turn those on now. On and in the minimum position for takeoff. Battery temperature's checked. As I said, they're all nice and cool at 10 degrees. No problem there. Uh, and now we do condition EVA's max. Best part of the flight. Props up. Second best part is when you bring them back to start feather. And now she's poised, poised for, for departing. Love it. Fishy was max. Standby high P2 control on. Now you can see we have brake pressure, hydraulic pressure, and then that brings the standby pressure in as well. Hydraulic pressure quantity checked. Hydro hide three isolation valve on on and now we run the elevators and check that that's still working which it is and then off again full travel norm flaps we'll go to flap five de-ice pressure check well, i'm not going to run the de-icing because i know the weather's good enough not to need it today then we can do rudder full travel which is quite simple with the pedals we get the indication down there and um, steering switch goes on for the nose wheel steering Windshield heat, pilot heat as required. Let's go. Uh, pilot side window heat, no. Windshield heat, I'm just going to put it to norm. I don't think the warm-up position is used very often. Flight taxi to taxi, that is in taxi. If it's in flight, all the ground spoilers come up because the airplane doesn't know it's on the ground. So that's these flight spoilers. But we'll put it to taxi and that holds them down. Good. Um, radar, you know, nav and com we've done. PFD, MFD, ED we've done. You and put on. Whatever on. Notice there's no IRSs we align because there is one, but it's built into this. So it just aligns. It's a little light that comes on here, but it doesn't take long and you don't have to do much with it. It's quite a straightforward system, actually. That is quite a good part of that FMS's design. Good, after sight is complete. Taxi lights, altimeters are on 1014, flight instruments we've checked. We can put the AUX pumps on the tanks. So this is basically still the after start. Um, auto feather we can select. So that's going on, and you get AF select. Very important you have this. Sorry, 122825. What's Unicom frequency? Two two eight, isn't it? Yeah. There we go. You can tell it's been a while. <laughs> Simple things like that. 
one, two, eight. Perfect. Thank you. Um, now I might hear someone. Order feather select. Flaps here. Five. Set and indicating. And trims three set at zero. Take up warning test. So let's release the parking brakes and hold on the tow brakes. And take up warning is over here. Looks good. Condition levers are at max 1020. Peter statics can come on. You'd normally do that probably entering the runway. There you go. That's a caution for the parking brake. Every time you set the parking brake, it gives you a warning. Good for situational awareness, I suppose, but also annoying. Ice protection not required. Caution warning lights check. Flight clearance reviewed. Cabin secure. That is the taxi check is complete. Next is a lineup. Good. So let's get out of here. On Pelé traffic, Mansa 334, taxiing by Whiskey 2, Tango for holding point, Tango 1, runway 30 right. Brakes released. Taxi light on. And you can just nudge it out of disc. And as soon as you do, it goes nice and quiet. And it's like driving in first gear. She'll just roll immediately on. Brake check. All good. I'm really surprised about the frame rate on this uh, scenery. What do you think about the man delivery on the Q500? I think this is a particularly nice version of it. I, did, I didn't create this one. But it's, uh, I think it's really good. Suits it. <laughs> a lot of people are still eagerly waiting dual stream in the flight to see Any plans and works? Sadly, like I say, I've, I just not had the, had the chance like that I wanted to get anything done for the channel over the last couple of weeks. It's been absolutely hopeless. So um, nothing, no change there. I'm afraid. Um, which is not good. YouTube does not. Um, support <laughs> channels that don't regularly upload and I know that there's some other channels that have been uh, very prolific with content so it will um, it will obviously you know it can only suggest what's what's there can't it so I need to I need to get more time in for this these streams um, yeah like I say I'm, I'm quite disappointed but hopefully as we go into the future that will change i know i've said that before though so i can i can uh, yeah i can see some gaps coming which i'm going to be using to stream but there is the the thing in the summer an airline flying is, is very busy and if you're flying all the time then in your time off sometimes you know i think it's good to be doing things with family and friends um in the, the time off you do get um and not to uh, get get too lost in um, in your days off, I suppose, because it could be quite tiring to go. The the way I was working on this channel during the pandemic was it, it quite you know I was doing a I did a video every day for a long time, and there's just no way I can do a video every day off. Partly because the way it takes me so long now, partly because I've done so many topics, I'm I I have slightly less natural things to go to i mean there's only so many cold and dark tutorials i can do um but also partly because the, yeah you need a little bit of downtime after a, a week of intense summer flying would you use your real efb for sim asked fk no not typically i tend to use navigraph it's easy to have it all on the screen i suppose but i do stream whether that would work for i don't know what happened there for um for you if you weren't streaming i suppose maybe evening that's serious pilot good to see you. thanks for joining us james says could you perhaps plan for a joint christmas stream could you plenty of time to work over it? yeah there's there's yeah, that's an idea that is an idea i have a very very busy summer coming <laughs> um very but i'm hoping by autumn especially you know usually in winter it's a bit quieter so yeah Yeah, it's not a bad idea. Not a bad idea, James. 
What do you think of the clouds? I don't know if it's had an update, to be honest with you. I haven't played X-Plane 12 in a while. I think it looks quite nice. You can ask me about Microsoft Flight Simulator. Indeed, Graham. I intend to be flying that again soon on stream. What airplane do we want to see next? I would do a poll, but I can't do polls on Twitch. <laughs> Just do another flight control check. Check the roll spoilers. No, they're not working. That's what we need to do. Get rid of the gas lock. That's why we do flight control checks. And there's the roll spoilers. That's all looking good. So, line up. Camera crew notified. Lead air, min, and they should be off. So you're not allowed them on at all. Just use them during the taxi. Anti collision's going to white. Which is the strobe lights effectively. Transponder the TCAS is on. Flight control is checked free. Flight taxi can go to flights. So the speed brakes come up and the landing lights can go on. Next is the after takeoff checklist. Let's get the landing lights on. Good. Nice scenery this. So the cool airport's flying to Montpellier. Nice and small. Lots of water around. Yeah, they, they do look good. Although if you look this way, there's there's too many small ones, aren't there? A little bit too defined. But let's see how they look as we get out there. Montpellier traffic, Mansa 334. Runway 30 right, lining up and taking off, departing to the east. Northeast, I suppose. Roman, um, if it's giving you a USR waypoint, then I don't know if that's because it doesn't recognize it. I don't tend to use a default flight planning system, so I, I can't help you with that one. Um, but that's a Microsoft Flight Simulator thing. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. That serious pilot says, I have a busy summer and awesome traveling with work, so I'm investing in a gaming laptop. I appreciate that's a big investment, but it will help me relax when I get out of the office after today. There you go. Yep, not a bad idea. There's always the Steam Deck. But you can't do. I don't think it does flight simulation. Minecraft does behind you. Speedway says, "Yeah, agreed." <laughs> so for takeoff, we're going to move the power levers through to the rating detent. Uh, we could do a derated takeoff today, frankly. It's a nice long runway. There's James. Now James in an Airbus, so we're not going to catch up either way. <laughs> Love the sounds as well. There's so many good things about this add-on. So put it into disc. Hold it here. So to derate the takeoff, I'm going to press reduce MP, decrease. And we're going to do 84% takeoff. It has more than enough power of this aircraft, so uh, it's really not a worry. I have a funny feeling we would put a little bit of right rudder in for takeoff. But I'm not going to do that. I don't remember. It does say neutral on the checklist. Anyway, we're now ready to go. So we're going to do power. We go straight through to detent. We don't need to stabilize the engines. They're, they're more responsive than jet engines. So they are unlikely to spool up separately. Then we're going to release that. Roll down the runway. And V1 rotate as usual. Positive climb. Gear up. And then we're going to get to 1,000 feet and do the rest. Um, we're going to follow the FS, which is going to go to D1.7 lake. You can see the blue line behind us because it just draws a line out. But there we go. Right. Here we go. Take off. Brakes released. Now just going to hold the buttons through. There we go. We're at flight idle. And there we go. Flight rating. That's power set. 84%. Look at that. Already there. No trouble at all. I love the rattles and shakes in this. It feels very fast if you find you. You are so low to the ground on the flight deck. It's, it does feel like going into hyperspace. There's 100 knots. V1 rotates. Bit of right rudder as you do. Keep rotating. You'll actually get off the ground. <laughs> and positive climb. Gear up. And away we go. <laughs> yeah, bit of a slow rotation there. Waypoint alert. It's telling us that there is a distance to the waypoint. I think it's just under a mile. And now I should see a right turn. But the waypoint that has reminded me that I need to go into nav. So let's do nav, L nav. Around we go to the right. Very twitchy and roll. I don't remember it being that sensitive in roll. It seems incredibly sensitive. There we go. Through a thousand feet. 
so we can lower the nose I'm gonna say IS 210 which is how we'll get the flight directors to lower the nose for the on-route climb speed. We're above 170 min clean, so we'll go flap zero. I'm gonna put the autopilot in. I'm gonna put the bleeds on a min so we can actually, pre sorry, on a norm so we can pressurize. And we'll bring the condition levers from 84. See how it goes amber on the bleed because it's saying you shouldn't have this much bleed being drawn during takeoff power. And now I'll bring the condition levers to 900. And then we'll get MCL, max climb thrust. And there we go, LNAV IS-210, outsell 5,000, 210 knots. And that is us on our way. After takeoff checklist, landing gear up, flaps are at zero. Climb power is set, speed A1 and 2 on and norm. Standby high PTU control can go to off. Auto feather no longer needed. Now if we have an engine failure, we'd handle it and shut it down in theory quick enough although I don't see why you shouldn't have auto feather all the time but I suppose it can't recognize failures when you have lower power settings and engine T's and P's check they're down here really quite a nice graphical system I like this system a lot of aircraft just have numbers and you do have numbers on the side but things like fuel flow are unlikely to trigger whereas oil temperature and pressure are very important and you see them there quite clearly temperatures and controls, passenger signs. That's it. There's our thousand feet to go beep. Right, what are we what are we gonna cruise at? Two four zero. We're gonna get all the way up to the dash eight, that is all the way up. Will something break if you turn the bleeds to normal max if you're still at max RPM? No. It, it's just you're demanding too much power from them. I'm just going to press IS again so that you can see how there it's trying to overspeed on me because there's no auto throttle system. So it's just going to keep accelerating. So you've got to be quite quick with this stuff. Or not quick, but careful. Uh, anyway, 24,000. Yeah, I don't think it would break anything. It could damage it eventually, perhaps. It's not really designed to be run like that. I, I, my understanding is it's to do with um, performance. So the reason it's amber is to warn you that you don't have the performance you think you're getting because you're, you're using the bleeds. And there's one, two, one, three, set all sides, going to 24,000. But I may be slightly misled on that. Again, it's been, it's been a while. Thank you, Montpellier, that was nice. Nice scenery as well. Basel Milehouse, still no weather information. Does anyone get weather information here anymore? It doesn't seem to work for me. The glass cockpit bits look fine. The MTQ or whatever they're called on the Q400, not so sure about that one. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is an amazing simulation of it, but yeah, it's it's hard to use, in my opinion, compared to, again, whether it's bad or not, I don't know. It's just very different. We can tell the fuel pumps. I think we need those at this point. The auxiliary pumps, anyway. But that's it. Off we go. Mean looking machine. Very good at performance, the Q400, so no issue climbing straight up to our maximum cruise level. Oh, heading bug. I don't think you can't click the heading bug on the Q400. You do just have to keep updating it. I'm just going to set it to the next leg in preparation. <laughs> James says, I'm in ATR 700 today, so you might catch me. Ah, there we go. Yes, we, we have a chance of catching in an ATR. Now, why can't I see... Get through. There is a way. I wish I remembered it. There is a way on here to change the TCAS up and down and so on, but I just don't remember what it is. Oh, it's, oh well, it's on the TCAS to display it. Auto. Hmm. 
let us have terrain. Next, let's watch the Captain Joe video about how turbo pump engine works. Fascinating, I had no idea. Indeed, yeah. Yeah. Captain Joe's done a, a good video on that. I think I saw that one. Through 10,000 feet now. Dash 8's quick to 10,000. A bit slower after that. Those can all go off. Uh, Fasten belts can go off. Wing inspection we don't need. Still no ice. No warnings up there. Looking good. Almost at the end of goal. And look at that, already way up. Look at that, they've even got the film on the uh, that sort of oily effect you get on some flight deck windows. Brilliant, just brilliant. So, then we go off, then we're making a left turn mode and MTL. For later, see into Basel, says Shadows. That's pretty good going. No, that's um, LSGG, that's Geneva. Is Basel online? As we get closer, will it show up maybe? Let's see if my VATSIM apps are still installed, hopefully. There's Zurich, there's Basel. I think Basel is not covered right now. There's a few aircraft there. Easy. Speedbird. Or is it covered? It's how ground and center. Elzad covers Basel. There we go. Thanks for that, Shadows. Perfect. Oh, that's good. Because they'll contact me. Because I won't. I'm not even able to identify that very well. That serious pilot says, I recently did my longest flight ever in my Sirius to Cairns. I have to say it was very uneventful, but a long 10 hours in total there and back. Thunderstorms and sea talk kept me busy on the way home. Every flight is a learning opportunity, just like one of your streams. Thank you very much, that serious pilot. And uh, yeah, that's a, that's a lot of flying. 10 hours is a lot of flying in anyone's book. Uh, long haul, short haul, Airbus, Sirius. But uh, it's a particularly long time in a Sirius, I'd have thought. So yeah, fantastic. Oh no, James Sim crashed. I thought I might catch up. <laughs> man says first time over here on twitch long time lurker on youtube and consumer of all videos on 320 snap love the airbus yeah airbus is great sorry we're in a q100 today <laughs> some people uh i had a, a viewer who was very keen for me to fly the q100 and i like flying the q100 it takes me back to my old days of flying it so uh yeah i'm just quite happy to oblige but we will be be in the airbus soon i think what what's which Airbus are we due? Is it the Phoenix? I'd like to fly the A310 as well. And I understand the Beluga is now compatible with X-Plane 12, although obviously we won't be an X-Plane for the next one. So we did the A32 and X last, then we did the ATR before that. That was quite fun. I remember the ATR stream. <laughs> A bit chaotic. Then we had the MD80 before that. And we're in X-Plane before that. Oh, we've done quite... X-Plane has been not too far apart. So... Yeah, Phoenix has been a little while now. In fact, we've done the fly-by-wire more often than the Phoenix. We haven't flown the Phoenix since February. Is that right? And the A310 since February. Where is time going? Ace Airstream says, got the Q400 six weeks ago and love it. Even more fun than ATR. Still can't land perfectly despite your tutorial video. Could you later in flight revise flat 1535 landing techniques? I can give it a go. But there is no perfect way to land the Q400. <laughs> it, as my, I think my video had in the title, More Luck Than Judgment. And that's my, uh, I'll stand by that. <laughs> Leanna says, plenty of coverage on the Phoenix. I need to find that. There we go. I have the Q400, but can't stand X-Plane 11, so I need to get X-Plane 12. Yeah, Chad has agreed. X-Plane 12 is much nicer to look at, definitely. Fiber wire is what I have. 
not thought it was ever worth it over the Phoenix. Fair enough. Yep, everyone's going to have different ideas about where they think it's worth. Right, go through some clouds. Engine takes open. Props on. Notice when the prop goes on, the oil temperature limit, the lower limit, increases. The amber band goes very high. The reason is you don't want to take off into icing without that oil temperature raised nice and high because that oil is used to heat other parts of the intake. Spirit will be great for Las Vegas when IEEs come out. So Spirit don't have CFM then? Of any variety, I guess. Northwest A320s are nice and old school CFMs like the Phoenix. There you go. That serious pilot says, is anyone guilty of just sticking to one aircraft? I fly, I fly the fly-by-wire all the time. I should try the ATR Q500. I'm guilty of it. I'm definitely guilty of it. Thanks, Dougal. Thanks for coming along. See you next time. Now, I don't remember the Q500 having this level off banana. That seems like a new feature or a fancy feature. I'm not sure they all had that. Spirit is IE and Pratt and Whitney. Oh, there we go. Pratt and Whitney Neos. How interesting. Very rare. Almost at 20. It does take a while, doesn't it? We didn't start the clock, I mean, when did we take off? Should have recorded that, but there we go. <laughs> Finally made it through 20,000. 49 minutes to go. Oh, apparently lots of. So the Sirius Pilot says Pratt and Whitney are having issues with new engines, lots of aircraft crowded. New engines often go through this. We've seen it before, haven't we, with uh, plenty of aircrafts. P-Man says, after learning and loving the A320, I tried diving into the 737. Oh dear, too much stuff to do for me. Do you know if it's just me? Now, there's a lot of... Um, You get used to it. I think everyone has their preferences. I, I do think the Airbus is a, is a very good aircraft and I can understand how if you fly that first, it could ruin the 737 for you. The 737 handles very nicely and there's a bit of a charm, I suppose, in manipulating the systems as much as you have to. The downside, of course, is you need to remember to do it all and in which order and it's not quite as easy as it is to do in a real aircraft when you're clicking around on a screen. But of course the consequences are less so it's a bit more relaxed to do it at home but yeah so no it's fair enough i know lots of people who aren't fans of the boeing aircraft when we fly them lauren b says pratt and whitney neos are the most common in the u.s americans 320 neos elite has a frontiers first batch of 320 neos but they're 21 neos and the latest batch of 320s are pratt and whitney how interesting has that all delta one and jet blue well, i wonder why frontiers swapped engine types that's quite unusual it's unusual for an airline to have both types of engines in the same generation. Very unusual. AFK dislikes the 737 overhead panel. Yeah, well, I, I can see why. <laughs> so Virgin America's gone then, is it? That, that sounds like a crazy question, but... Is it gone? Did it go a long time ago? <laughs> Is Virgin Australia still going? I know they had trouble. Was it and Lufthansa both fly the Pratt and Whitney? Interesting. I didn't know Lufthansa flew Pratt and Whitney. Indigo also got both leaves Pratt and Whitney's. So they just wanted a lot of aircraft now. Well, fair enough. I suppose if you need the aircraft and the engines are being made. Oh, Virgin America has been gone for five years. There you go. World moves on. Was Virgin America low cost or was it like a Southwest competitor? I don't really know.
yeah yeah it's, it's it's relatively rare i should say most airlines don't want to have to train engineers on different types of engines but there's no restriction for pilots as it were you can have all of the engines and the pilots just have to sort of learn them so you know currently people fly 319s 20s 21s and then they'll fly the neo variants and the old variants so and some airlines will have them be flying 320s with cfm and ies and then they might also have neos with leap and Pratt whitney it rarely makes a big difference to the way you operate the aircraft just some different limitations oh look at that contrail so there you go EZS is definitely in a jet and this is where the Q400 starts to run out of puff you get you know 320 at 20,000 feet has all the performance in the world um, the Q400 less so version Australia's long haul division no longer exists but they still fly short -haul. ah there we go interesting thanks Lauren V Diana says I started with a Zebo after Challenger 300 now flying Airbus don't think I'll go back to Boeing Fair enough, yeah. Virgin America was a boutique airline, kind of low cost but premium looking, but a small first class, kind of like JetBlue. Ah, there you go, but with domestic first class too. Yeah, JetBlue, they come over to England now. Which is, um, yeah, a long way for a 321. <laughs> but shows it can do it. My favourite family variant would be the 320. Most people prefer 21s. I still prefer the 20, personally. 21s ride turbulence the best, I suppose. But aside from that, you know, you've got to be a little careful taxiing them around. They're quite quiet. That's the nice thing about 21 Neos. Especially, 21 Neos are really nice because they're so quiet on the flight deck with the engine noise and so on. But then by the time you're in the cruise, they all sound about the same. That serious pilot likes the 318. Yeah, and it says 320 Neo or CEO. I'm going to say CEO. However, that's only because I'm used to it. So the reason I like the 320 CEO is because on a windy day or in any sort of unusual condition or an unusual approach or challenging landing, if you give me a 320 CEO, I'm most at home in it. It's what I've flown the most. Look at that. We have run out of puff. And I'll tell you why. Uh, I've forgotten. What we're supposed to do is when the pitch reaches 5, we're supposed to have pressed IS again to get pitch hold and then set the pitch to 5 degrees. Oh, not that much. Otherwise, it won't climb. Yeah, it runs out of puff. So now we have to trade our speed. Let that wash off. That's what we needed to do. And that will get us the final bit up. <laughs> Crazy climbing in pitch mode, but that's what we did. There's a 1,000 feet to go. Um, yeah, so... 19s are fun and fine but on thermally days and windy days they get blown around a bit more thermally days in particular they're a problem because they get so much lift off the wings that to stabilize them and to get the right amount of speed off and so on can be a little bit tricky 20s don't have that problem 21s are nice but you have the pitch limit on landing you also have the uh, extra weight and momentum you've also got to be a bit more careful taxiing them you know they're quite long you can't see the wing out the window whereas 20s you can so yeah big fan of 20s goofy hello to you thanks for joining us looks like a mini 350 for the 321 neo lauren v reckons yeah it's nicely proportioned especially the big engines on the nice long airplane and look at this next problem with the dash see how we've sailed through 24,000 feet why has that happened because we didn't press out sail and none of you reminded me or well, at least not that I saw which still makes it your fault not mine <laughs> no of course not there we go out start ridiculous system this should not need a separate press but there it is out so we're in the cruise now LNAV and out with the AP let's bring the condition levers back to the cruise phase then we get MCR which funnily enough in the dash is a lower power setting you can stay at climb thrust all day Oh, no, it's not. No, it's a higher power setting, but on the lower RPM. Okay, there we go. But yeah, you can stay at these all day. You can stay at climb. If you forget to put it from 900, it doesn't really matter. Ask me how I know. Ebos, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. I hope you're doing very well. Great to have you here. Lauren says, we are Airbus first officers, not Dash first officers. How are we supposed to know about the silly automation? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 
exactly it's crazy I, I yeah i can't get over it there's no reason to have it separate uh it's it's not the only aircraft to do it we all know and love other flights of airplanes that do it but the dash is a prominent one famous for that feature i think would be a way to put it anyway we are carrying on with our flights making good progress we're going to now accelerate start making some real progress actually a bit of a tailwind there so what we can do we have the tablet let's just remind ourselves of what arrival we're doing going by Altic by the Lumet 8 Kilo and I'm imagining the approach is on to runway 3-3 let's just check the weather Uh, variable three. It could be either end, actually. That's serious pilot says, My current fave is the A350-1000, but absolute fave is 727-200 with the upgraded engines. Yeah, nice choices. Hard to say that the 350-1000 is a bad-looking airplane. I, I would perhaps say its tail is too small. But aside from that, I do like it. Is the jittering on the NDB realistic? No, no. NDBs tend to be quite inaccurate. They do swing around a lot and so on, but they wouldn't jitter like that, no. Good spot. Um, yeah, variable winds down there, so it could be the ILS Zulu 33, but likewise, this arrival puts us to Altix, so let's prepare a chart for the ILS Zulu 15, just in case. So that these will get us to Altic. Um there's the approaches and we just need the transition oh so it's just a vector so from out you just head <laughs> carry on on 091 east basically towards the airport and they'll vector you that's fine good and then we can have a ground chart ready not come out of the works such a nuisance but there they are always efforts always working what chart's this Luckily, we're not in a 340-600. We're not in a 747-800. We're not in an Anson 124, an A380-800, a Boeing 777-300. I don't know what the C5M is. Is that a Galaxy in military? <laughs> or an A350-1000? So we don't have to worry about the red. We did. There we go. Arrival's pretty straightforward, really. Lumel to D246, around the arc, and then back into Altic. Then from Altic, we take our vector, and then we vector ourselves onto the RS, or maybe we'll get controlled. Let's see if we can get an 80 a bit closer in. C5M is the modernized C5B. Thanks, Henri. There you go. Landing in Zurich now, says Shadows. So I'll tell you the landing rate. Very good. P-Man says, are you automatically type rated on all the 320 family if you do one of them? Yes, you are. Indeed. Yeah. That Cirrus pilot says, yes, it normally just points to the nearest thunderstorm. Yeah, so NDVs are, they are hopeless. Um, you don't see them very much now. I, they don't tend to move this quickly. But in terms of swinging around and inaccuracies, yes, they, they do move around. Like, yeah. However, that could depend on the aircraft. Maybe the, um, maybe the modern... Or maybe some aircraft dampen the reception so it doesn't jitter. Don't know. 224. Here we go. Finally making some progress. So we are still at the uh, rated cruise power here, and this is all we're getting. <laughs> we're pretty heavy today, and I feel like we can tell. <laughs> Would the 321X of require additional training due to long haul operations? No, your airline might suggest or might do some long haul training, um, but they might not. <laughs> I mean, they might just, they'll have briefing material available and you'll have, you might be expected to brief yourself. I mean, if you go oceanic, you go oceanic. Short haul aircraft do that all the time in various ways. Uh, in Europe, you could go on the tango routes. If you're going to the Canary Islands and you don't want to fly over France, then you might get routed over the water. So, you know, 
there's lots of stuff that doesn't get extra training and yeah that could well be one of them now here's the thing with flying turboprop we're under the clouds so what if our cruise level was in this cloud layer then you'd be getting bounced around and icing the whole time i gotta say this is good looking clouds though not bad just just a little bit yeah too bitty just a bit but this is a nice view at the front that sort of dark underneath i like the, the shading on these clouds above us but yeah, you get yourself stuck like this, and then that's all you can do. Just sit there. Lauren Reed says, V1 says, Oceanic Ops, his operator is just a CBT. Yeah, so CBT is computer-based training, and yeah, that's common. That's all you'd need. The reality is, sim time's expensive, and there's not a lot of sim training you would... that needs it, I suppose. It's more theoretical. But yeah, I suppose your question by was additional training, and yeah, additional training of some variety is likely, but it's, it'll be quite limited in scope. Explain 12.6 will bring 12.06 will bring some further improvements to cloud rendering. There we go. Looking forward to that. It's, it's not terrible, and it's certainly a massive step up. And every now and then we get glimpses of greatness out of it. Oh, getting some rain. Explain rain there. Such a fast looking airplane. This. Maneuver the heading boat for the next leg. Um, good. So, cruise, check this out. is on standard. A bit late for that, but power is now in cruise. Kevin pressure. Let's check that. So, there's the landing altitude. There's the cabin rate zero, sitting at just under 8,000 feet. Pretty high on the diff. And that makes sense because we're not far off the ceiling of the Q500. 25,000 feet ceiling. 27,000 feet if we had paid for the oxygen and lights is required. Next is the descent checklist. Look at this, even the little table works. This table is good. Back when you used to have A5 size charts, so Jefferson charts would be an A5 booklet and it would fit on there perfectly and then clip and you can close it if you needed to. You also had obviously your yoke, which they don't use click spots for here. Look at that, you can move the pedals. Outrageous. Um, yeah, so you could clip it to your yoke, which is the most common place to have it. And the table, I think that would be the only options. And then this has a little light here that lights it up. Pretty well organized, really. Right, making the turn. Wouldn't be this quiet in the cabin, though. Desert says, I wish X-Plane 12 had visible icing on all aircraft. I hate flying and getting icing on the 172 and just fall out of the sky. Or in another aircraft with ice detection, it gives me an alarm. I look outside the window and nothing's there. Yep, yeah, ice is always a nice feature, a bit of realism. Although we saw how it could get a bit over <laughs> overactive in Microsoft Flight Simulator. But yeah, it's a nice bit of realism. Q400 sitting in the clouds. In that level above us there, I would be expecting it to get a bit of ice yeah chad has got 175 feet per minute not too bad not bad indeed not bad so when it comes to um landing the q400 we have two flap settings, 15 and 35. Uh, the normal would be 15 on a longer runway, and Basel would be an example of that. Landing flap 15 in the Q400 is quite limiting. It's a low flap setting, and all we can pitch to on landing is five degrees. Now we, we approach relatively flat, although with flap 15 you actually approach with the nose slightly up. So then to flare, you may only have one or two degrees left that you can pitch to. But that's fine. You'll flare as required, but you just don't touch the power. Don't remove the power. Leave it where it is and flare as required, stopping at five degrees, and you should find you have room to settle on. If you flare and you find it, you know, you're just dragging along the runway a bit, then you can just trickle the power off a little bit, but you don't want to bring it back to idle. Once the main wheels are down, that's when you bring it to flight idle. Then you get the nose wheel down and you can bring it to disc. 
if you bring it to disc too early you actually it acts like a big speed break above the center of gravity and it tries to drag the nose up and then you can strike the tail if you're landing flat 35 this airplane is currently set for 35 if i put 15 um if you're landing 35 by the way the 10 setting is for abnormal situations uh, the 35 setting then you're going to come in nose down so tail strikes aren't an issue but wheel barrowing is which is when you land just on the nose gear so what you need to do in this case is uh, as you start the flare you do need to trickle the power off and you're sort of flaring whilst trickling the power off to make sure you can get the nose up enough to then land it's really quite awkward Crossville from Memphis one. There was a bug on this, I remember that could break it. Let's hope it works. There we go. Good. Yeah, so we'll do a 15 today, I think. Buzz is a nice long runway. The man says, speaking of sound in the cabin, I couldn't believe the noise when I did he to Dundee a few weeks ago in an ATR. Yeah. Yeah, turbo props are noisier, there's no doubt. They often advertise themselves as being quiet um, for their external noise, so, so they're quite popular because they can go into sort of noise sensitive airports because their noise certificates are lower because they don't make much noise on takeoff. However, they do have this sort of drone that you can hear, and if you're on a quiet day, you can always hear turboprops in the cruise because they go overhead. <laughs> Four prawns, good to see you. Thank you, Four prawns, for your uh, um, tip the other day or the other week I should say now we're good to see you Paul Prawn says I definitely need to sort my landing feet for a minute I seem to be going through a bad patch perhaps I should faff with my seat position yeah that's it fiddling with the seat position on final is a good way to help your landings everyone knows that <laughs> you just keep fiddling them is there any guideline on which flap to use in Q100 I can't remember the distances but obviously the shorter runways flap 35 but I can't remember what a short runway for the Q400 is if you're landing in somewhere like Belfast City then flap 35 I would say. The Cube 100 has active noise cancelling though, doesn't it? Hence the name. It does have active noise cancelling, hence hence the Q for quiet, but I would not get too excited about it. In my experience, you you could notice when it wasn't when it wasn't working, but it's still a, a turbo prop, put it that way. And something that used to occasionally happen. Let's see if we can go back and see it. Oh, there we go. I don't seem to be working. Um, yeah okay. so this is the NVS this is a noise vibration or something system and if it could sometimes get a light that's heading up and then what you could do is you could pause it and I think you would pause it to try and if you had a stuck actuator so it's made up of little actuators that would vibrate the side of the airplane just like noise cancelling headphones and what it would do is you could um, I think you'd have to pause it when it was causing trouble and then you would try and get it to restart but you could sometimes hear a sort of a weird rattling noise which was those if those actuators malfunctioned or were just running out of sync um, and that that was not you know that did occasionally happen <laughs> there it is <laughs> fly just in plush toy <laughs> it's good detail on it too. It's textured and everything. Flight sim aircraft are just there's something special about them. Look at these seats, the tattiness of them, the way they just sort of yeah, the spring fabric. This is these are absolutely the Q hundred seats. Every visor has a sound. It's really remarkable.
Because it says, does it go up to the flight deck? Oh, I don't know. I don't think so. Oh, there it is. <laughs> it does indeed. I oh, will leave it there. It's not, not bothering us. So we're still sitting at max cruise. We're still not accelerating. Turning these systems off. I'm a little surprised. You would need you wouldn't be able to sit at the rating D10. Static air temperature minus 31, so it's average temperature. We're struggling a little bit more than I'd imagine. Yeah, good good guess, that's it. <laughs> Unless you already knew that. <laughs> that is good. Alright. Let's just check the range. There we go, there's our arrival coming up already. 80 miles, that's down to Connell, and then we'll go up by our points, then back round, then vector. So that's the sort of DME arc. So we're going to find out from air traffic soon what's going on. We have an ATIS, a massive ATIS, Euro Basel Milehouse Freiburg Airport. <laughs> Information Charlie. Uh, Hawkfish, thanks for the follow. Um, so, they're using runway 15. There we go. Of course. Of course. Are there Zulu expected? So, there you go. Someone was asking earlier about Zulu whiskey. Zulu is the most common, but they would also tell you in the ATIS eventually. It's variable 3. 24 degrees. Lovely evening. Considering it's almost dark there. QNH 1015. Good, that's information, Charlie. So let's set up for that. One five. Uh, we agreed on the Lumel. The uh, sorry, RS Zulu one five number five via Altic. Good. So, VOR for one five is this one. So we need the transition, which is just this vector. It doesn't make a difference. Uh, which is here. No, it's here. <laughs> uh, yeah, vector off like that, and then we're going to fly the ILS onto one five. Let's get rid of the three three for now. So from Altic we'll probably be heading off and then our vector's downwind. And then we go. Freezing in Lincolnshire, says Nick. Oh dear. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty warm up here. Or out here. Alice Dimi, 111.55, so let's tune that in. Alice Dimi, 111.55, tune that in. Course 152 degrees. So I was shown how to do this recently. That puts it into wings level. Oh no, out. Oh, what was it? It was to do with setting the page two to the RS. the needle that's the needle that's format there we go you hold format brings up RS1 finally evening Mariner Halley good to see you I hope you're doing well I'm doing well thanks for coming along sorry it's been so long Mariner Halley says, I'm normally in Lincolnshire, but holidaying in the Norfolk Broads this week, and it's pretty cold here too. Oh dear. Yeah. The east of the UK has been a bit colder. There's been a continuous easterly breeze over the UK, which is a bit unusual. Very unusual, really. And it's been going continuously. So some parts of the country are getting colder weather than they should be at this time of year, because it's just been bringing cold air down from the north. Uh, that is my, <laughs> my non-expert meteorological opinion of it all. But yeah, it's quite rare. 
so in the uk we've just been using easterly runways for weeks now which has not happened very often we're, we're generally a westerly runway place 152 there we go is 1152 1155 simples uh let's do it on well yes i should do it on the other side is right, two i can already see it because we're not using that side so we can set One, five, two. Good. So ground speed. 353. Yeah, not that much. Mariner says, yeah, I like Meteorology and Eastleys are rare. There you go. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> P-Man says, how often in real life do you have to track needles? Been trying to practice after watching your video. Thanks for watching the video. Uh, you, uh, you do it a lot in training you almost never do it flying uh, exception being a VOR approach but on the Airbus now you don't have to do that almost ever because there'd have to be a raw data VOR as opposed to just a, a VOR where you can just let the airplane fly which is what we would do now and just use the VOR in the background Lip -lip. sadly I never flew the shorter Dash 8s I heard very nice things about the Q300s and 200s, but I've never flown one. But people who had flown them tended to like them. And they tended to like them more than the 400. I suspect due to the fact that they weren't limited in the same way. Um, they're a little simpler, they weren't quite as fancy, but they also didn't have like the 5 degree pitch limit. I'm, I'm guessing there though. Yeah, Airbus is great indeed, PN, and it does. It's you'd have to be a severely downgraded Airbus to need to track needles, and then you would have to do it. So we, we all pilots are able to do it. it. It's sort of like riding a bike. It, it does stick with you for a long time. The needles it doesn't. It's yeah, it's something that we do because we're constantly watching needles, I suppose. But yeah, not something we do very often. Um, good. So yeah, that's our arrival. So we've got high terrain all around us. We need to be careful. Terrain up in the region of 6,400 feet. And in area number three, it's 4,100 feet. Um, and then within 15 miles, it's 4,1. So yeah, it's high. So we'll just watch out for that as we head round. We'll make sure that we're not going below it unless we're happy with where we are. And then we'll just vectors over here. Join the ILS. Once we get on the ILS, it is a normal three degree localizer only is 3.12 but the normal rs is three degrees and we are going to be sending down course of 152 starting at 9.5 miles airfield is at an elevation of 900 feet so we're actually only about uh, 3,000 feet from the ground so hence we descend about nine miles which makes sense and down we go minima for this one you can see 1134 So I'll round it up, 1140. 1140. Um, and there we go. Landing wise, it's a massive great runway. There it is, 3,900 meters. So like I say, we do flat 15, talked about the technique for that. And then we just rolled out, hopefully somewhere by the terminal down here. Now I know Basel has a lot of road works going on. Um, hence we saw those ground charts. I don't know if the vaccine controllers are going to expect us to follow that or not. <laughs> we shall see. Right, what's going on here with the arrival? We're going to come in. Le Mel. Hmm. Not convinced about this. Let's zoom in. Is there a way to scroll through it like a plan mode there it is so from Telno Corred Connell Ballet Lumel fine Lumel 291 
Arc 5 to Altic. Yeah. From Altic vectors. Okay. So this looks confusing, but this stuff here is to the go around. We're not doing that. We're going to go Lumel. Arc vectors. Are we? There's the 246 Yankee. There's the arc. There's Altic. Right, so Altic and then vectors. This part here is to do with the arrival. Right, that's the confusing part about that picture. That's the go around, sorry. Good. That's what we wanted to know. Well, no one's telling us otherwise. Let's go direct to. Let's see if we can figure out how to do direct to Ballet number 17. Direct. Does 17 work? There it is, Ballet. We're in nav mode. No traffic to tell us not to. Altitude wise. Well, the dash eight you can you can bring down. Don't need much room at all. So, there's Ballet. Yeah, I don't remember using three degrees on the Q500 for the descent distances, but let's, let's, I think you can do, I think it would be too early. Even so, if we got straight to the center fix, we would need to start down, I think, soon. Flipip says, do you know when the next podcast is planned to come out? I enjoyed the last one with Cage Pilot. Thanks, I'm glad you enjoyed it. It was really good fun to do. Um, I I want to get one out. <laughs> I like to do them every two weeks. I haven't managed that again. It's another problem. But um, I'm working on that. Hopefully hopefully not too long. Flight's going well today, so girls, thanks very much for coming along. Liana says, so how long ago did you actually have to fly needles years? Well, I'll give you an idea. Um, flying, the Q400 is a relatively basic aircraft. When I started on the Q400, to fly an NDB approach, it wasn't certified in my airline to use the nav mode. So you had to fly it in heading select mode and then track the needles, just like I showed you in that video. And that was something we would do. That was a genuine way we flew NDB approaches. And that's fine. It's, you know, it's totally allowed. You could do it today if you wanted. But that was rare. That was when I started flying. Um, so that's now over 10 years ago that disappeared soon after I started flying and the aircraft became approved to just use nav mode and now on the Airbus and 737 I don't know about 73 as much but on the Airbus certainly most non-precision approaches you can actually arm a version of approach mode where it flies the whole vertical profile as well for you but we were sat there flying it heading tracking the needle vertical speed tr <laughs> trying to trying to follow the vertical profile very basic so Kels says, your podcasts are so good. I really look forward to them. Any insights on guests? That's very kind, Sir Kels. Thanks so much. Really appreciate it. No insights at the moment. Work to be done. Work to be done. I'm really glad you enjoyed it. Thank you. The workload of doing that, all oh, that must be immense as p -Man. Yeah, it is. Doing the approaches like that was an incredibly high workload. Um, should we have heard from air traffic control yet? One two eight zero five zero. I'm just gonna tune it. In the backgrounds. Uh oh in standby, sorry. Nick says be interested to hear you talking to cabin crew in a podcast. Must be an interesting job and difficult. Okay, interesting. Yep. Uh, Liana says, are you considering bringing in simulator-only pilots on your podcast as well, or only actual pilots? Um, no, definitely considering simulator-only pilots. Definitely. Cabin crew is a really interesting idea.
Um, but yeah, definitely um, considered simulated pilots. But I need to make some more progress in terms of uh, yeah, getting some contacts. <laughs> interesting ideas there thank you yeah i like it the next podcast will probably be with to be fair it won't have a guest because i need to space that out a bit um just in order to organize things so the next podcast likely to be with um i'm hoping will be with barney but again not guaranteed yet it's proving hot difficult <laughs> difficult to get uh time sorted for that <laughs> Right, we can zoom in on the range. Always a nice feeling. When you zoom in, I love that feeling of zooming in and then seeing your destination stay in the picture. <laughs> Sign you're getting very close. Let's just check what sort of altitude they're expecting us to be. Between 9-0 after Lumel. That's only 10 miles away, so it's time to get down, really. There you go. Look at that. It beeps just because I'm scrolling past it. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. That beep is supposed to alert you that you're getting near or deviating from your assigned or your selected altitude. I suppose it still serves that purpose like that, but uh, yeah, I would also suggest it might be desensitizing you. We all have Barney, says Nick. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so Kel says, I hope you get around to having a manual 737 driver. Uh, so that's a manual, yeah, the, the uh, YouTube channel. Um, we'd love to hear you guys talk flight together. I would enjoy it. Uh, no matter what, though. Thanks very much, Nikhil. Really appreciate it. HC would be a good idea as well. Thanks, Leanne. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to start my descent now. Down to 90. So vertical speed, 1500. And out So we'll now level off. And now we do need to start bringing the power back. Yeah, I don't know much about 737 driver driver's channel i've seen obviously v1 and flight data zim videos power coming all the way back now and it's idle do it nice and gently in the rear aircraft that would generate a big yawing moment and you need left rudder trim to counteract it and yeah it needs a little bit and now 2000 feet per minute probably about standard maybe two two and here we go heading back round So maximum five. Oh no, that that nine zero is the limit. Um, so yeah, so actually we can go. Uh, max flight level is one one zero at Altic. So one one zero would be perfectly fine. Ground engineering staff, Star V. Yep. Yeah. It's going to be tricky for some of those, <laughs> especially given how few I know. But yeah, interesting. Here we go. One, two, eight, three. So my frequency was completely wrong. No surprise there. Very quiet. The dash is <laughs> too loud for me. Um, okay, let's see if this volume works. Control Manta 334 descending flight level 90. Uh, expecting the Lumel arrival for Basel. No, what's going on? I'm listening. Volume's up. Adjusting my volumes frantically. Test, 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 test. Okay. Still safe on speed now. Shoot. What's going on here then? What frequency have I tuned? Twenty-three. I was told to contact one two eight three LFEE center. Uh, 
Control Manta 334. Control Manta 334. Twelve thousand Manta 334. Okay, we're sort of working. Um, yeah. Yes, we do. I think we have some ground stuff in our group actually, so that's that could be a good way to do it. Time to get chatting doing your walk around but yes, indeed, make some quick friends. <laughs> So, seven three drivers now doing an Airbus rating. Yes, I think I had heard that. Next, especially talk to anyone involved in aviation. Exactly. <laughs> but it would be good to hear different, different, completely different things. It would slightly deviate from the flight sim focus of this podcast. That's all. But if you guys are happy with that, then that's definitely something we could consider. I have to think up of some new introductory questions. <laughs> Seven five four eight zero radar vectors are Zulu one five, Manta three three four. Eight zero, still on standard, that's fine. Descent checklist altimeters staying on standard. Approach landing briefing reviewed. Cabin attitude control set. I've checked this right. Oh, yeah, actually, that's a good point. Those clouds looking good. They are looking good out there. Um, we should have set this to almost 1,000 feet. There it is. Cabin altitude still at 8,000 feet. Not really descending, so hopefully it does start soon. In case you haven't caught on, we just have to hear you guys talk about your job. Yeah, fair enough. That's 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 cool. That's really good to know. Gives me some some good options there. Cabin crew may well be possible, and that I think that would be really interesting. I think that all of those would be interesting. Let me say that again. All of those would be interesting. But cabin crew is, is something I am um, might be possible. Uh, sooner rather than later. By the way, this distance page doesn't need to stay here. You, you should have really moved it over to nav like that. That's how you expect to see it. So <laughs> better late than never. Now, control to this say radar vectors. I am currently. I put connect one zero five on there. By the way, that's just so we know for later. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to keep following the flight plan arrival for now. There it is. Left heading 050, Manta 334. Just going to reduce virtual speed. It shouldn't do that within 1,000 to go really a bit risky. We're going to go heading select 050, virtual speed 1,000. And now remember, a bit of power on. Now, when you fly this aircraft enough, you get used to exactly what power setting you need to do a thousand meter minute and to level off and so on. <laughs> okay, let's change the course selector, not the course, the nav source to RS1. Holding 230 knots. See how that limiter is now chopping down around 80 and out star, which is something it does, which catches you out. And I know one five two is correct, kids. If I just do the left heading for one two zero, clear that it's a low on the one five. So there's our approach speeds. One twenty four final. Yep, my bad height one two zero. Low ten thousand feet. 
pressure's on. I'm going to put all the lights, landing lights on anyway. Good. Um, so yeah, there you go. That's not quite enough power. Let's trickle that power on. Now, this is going to... Our flight plan is not going to be very sequenced, I think. Let's just say vectors. Ten four thousand feet QNH one zero one five. Ten four thousand feet QNH one zero one five. Meant to three three four. That's great. They're using a cool sign. I like that. I like that a lot. Four thousand feet. Vertical speed. QNH one zero one five. One zero one five. One zero one five. One zero one five. Good stuff. That's four thousand. I'm expecting it to sequence as we get closer. We shall see. Anyway, we are getting an I, a visual RLS, and then what I can do on here is listen to the RLS for the ident, which will be on this one. So you click it in, and then you can hear it. Dun, 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 dun. So we go. That's it. Done. Left wing 020, zero, zero, man to 334. Three, three, oh no, not out. Give it to me. Left. There we go. 020. Zero, zero. So looking good. We've got an RS, we've got an we've got a visual clue on it. Um, I'm not sure the track miles to go, but I think we need to be lower to be ready for it. And then we must remember out cell. <laughs> Thanks, Pip Pip. <laughs> Caught me just in time. I think the Morse code works in Microsoft, but I don't know. I don't do it very much because the Airbus obviously in a lot of aircraft nowadays visually ident for you, even the CRJ and so on. Now back to idle. Can you hear it in the others? Riding 130 cleared Alice Zulu 15, Manta 334. I like it. That's that's uh, fancy vectoring. Now, when a controller does that to you, you need to be relatively sharpish to get it put in because that is going from directly downwind onto an inset heading. That's confident vectoring. I like it. So 130. I'm going to wait till the airplane turns around the corner a little bit. We are now coming in on profile 6,000 feet, 15 miles out, which makes sense because remember we're actually only at 5,000 feet above the airport, so 5,000 feet above the airport would be about 15 miles. No problem with the speed. I can keep 210 knots in the dash to well down the approach. It is one of the perks of the dash is that it can join the ILS clean. It's a bit slower in the vectoring area, but it's faster once it's on the ILS. Jets, you just have to slow down earlier. Right, pointing in, we've got an inset heading. We're on the profile. Let's wind the vertical speed back a little bit. And I'm going to arm approach. Lock, as I said, we're now white to that. Yeah, uh, James asks, have you ever uh, delayed a departure or approach due to air ambulance alpha designation? I'm told when tasked that the alpha stage doesn't take priority. Yes. You, you, it's, it's not like they would, you know, let's say there's an air ambulance on the way in and you're making your approach. They're not going to break you off to stay out of the way in this Lockstar and Glide Soap we're on now. They're not going to do that to keep you out of the way, as it were, but they will fit them in without any holding or any delay. So it could be that you then do a little bit of extra holding, um, or maybe you'll be sat on the runway a bit longer, but then, as in, uh, sorry, sat waiting to depart, what can happen though, you are right, is that you might be sat on stand and they'll say, sorry, we can't let you go because we have hospital traffic or ambulance traffic or a medical emergency, any of those things. So that does happen, yeah. 180 to 6. 180 to 6, meant to 334. That's fine, 180, we can do that. What are the flat limit speeds? That's my next question. 
They're written somewhere. Over there. Flat 5 is 200. Flat 10, 181, 172. Okay. So let's bring it back to 180. I'm going to stay at 850 for this landing. Done the descent. Attempt to set lights as required. GPS landing flat we've done. Fuel transfer off, but we can turn the fuel pumps on. Standby hide on. One one eight three, meant to three three four. Thanks for your help. Goodbye. We're doing one eighty to six, so let's keep the speed up. And one one eight five four. Red out should be about right. Three five at three one. Yeah, airfield's on a bit of a hill. We are now visual. Ta bonjour, meant to three three four. ILS runway one five. We are seven miles. Bonjour may have been the wrong way to do it. Anyway. Three. So we need another pilot. There's 183, right, 170, we're now at 5 miles, we go flat 5. Quality 4862, ground 1 to 1.6, bye bye. Uh, hi, standby, passenger side to Dan, caution one lights check, cabin is secure, that's the approach check's complete. Next is the landing checks. Let's go flat 10, get the gear horn, ridiculous, but there it is. 4 miles, we'll go gear down. You see how easy it is to slow down a dash, and if we needed to bring the props forward, we would have slowed down like we're putting on the brakes, it's amazing. Power up now. That's the thing with the dash, don't get caught out slow. And we'll go flat 15. Zulu, Bravo, fly extended downwind. Call you back for uh, back to base. We have traffic IFR on ILS. <laughs> extended downwind. Uh, next report base. Right, landing checklist, landing gear down. Landing Three with, greens. Uh, Flaps 15. Set, indicating. So Conditionally, but as we go. Reduced MP, condition is to max, but they'll stay at 850. Leads go on and min, and that put it into white. And FA is notified. Next is to land. Mm, that, that is a bit of a slow approach speed. Tower, good day, Manta 334, ILS, runway 15. Good evening. Wind 347 degrees 5 knots on runway 15, clear to land. Clear to land runway 15, Mansa 334. There we go. So we're already manual thrust, no worries there. I reckon somewhere in the sort of about 20% on the torque. All piled off. So we're going to hold the power where it is, see how we're already at 5 degrees pitch. This makes it really difficult to get much more out of it. Bit of power on. 100. I don't think we're actually four reds there. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. There, there it is. Right. Oh, nose down. Now we can bring it to the disc. Oof, see how it tries to raise the nose. <laughs> that was a bit unpleasant. They shouldn't overspeed like that. That isn't realistic. They would disc quite happily. But there we go. That was a lot of sync at the end there. And this is the problem. You run out of pitch. You have to just add power. It's really quite remarkable. Right. We haven't used any brakes yet, so we shall. Here's Fox Shot. Good evening. Go back to disc. Good evening, Hotel Bravo Kilo Mike Uniform. And we'll make it here. Welcome to Basel. We got away with that. That was a bit of a, a lot of sync that could have gone quite badly wrong. <laughs> but we'll certainly be looking at the replay soon, don't you worry. Could be quite interesting. Hotel Mike Uniform. Delta Sir Kel says, How many times when you were a kid did you wish you 
could go talk to pilots your podcast was like getting to go sit in the cockpit with the cool kids <laughs> i'm glad you enjoyed it Sikels. um when i was growing up you could go to the flight deck so i did so i i'm lucky i i got to do that and that's i had no doubt a heavy part of why i now do this job flight taxi landing lights off Text lighting go on Peter static off Windshield heat off so we're now clear two ship landing one to one six man to three three four thank you goodbye we're getting fantastic coverage this evening one two one my uniform report, please, Six. Puzzle ground, Manta 334, run with a catered foxtrot. Manta 334, bound on the Bonsa. Welcome to Basel. Taxi to stand foxtrot 4 via foxtrot and alpha. Foxtrot alpha to stand foxtrot 4. Thank you, Manta 334. Look at this. This is great. So we are on Foxtrot, then we'll take Alpha down to Foxtrot 4 over on the other. We're, we're not on the main terminal. Oh, well. Let's get out of the way. Uh, hold on. So Alpha is the second. It's the inners, as it were. <laughs> Almost fell for it. There we go. It does drive quite nice on the ground, the dash. It's relatively planted and has good grip on the nose gear and it's not too heavy. Right, flaps up. Control lock on. APU is on. Guess I'm going to generate now. I don't remember where that would happen. We sorted out the lights and the bleeds, and I'm going to put the bus tie back on. After landing, right, control lock is on. Transponder, oh yeah, standby, radar standby. We'll do that as we get to stand, actually, the transponder. And we can turn off the tank aux pumps and the standby hydraulics. Your damper, so so many things in this flow. It's just amazing. Spoiler flight we've done. Taxi, strobe lights can go to red. Lights is required. Peter static off. Windshield heat off. Window heat off. Ice protection off as required. Main bus tie tie. APU bleeder one or two. Right, we've managed all of that. That's the main terminal. This doesn't look like default. Have I got scenery for this? Anyway, replay coming up soon, don't you worry. So that was down 20. Going to keep going on Alpha. Fox Shot 4 will be off 45 degrees on our left. Good, that is the after landing complete. Next is the shutdown. He man says, lovely landing. How close to the threshold do you pay attention to what the puppies are displaying? I mean, you keep an eye on them. If they're four reds or four whites, even close in, that's, well, after like 100 feet, you're not really using them. But before that, they're useful. They are useful. They're called precision approach by the end of the game. I mean, they're, they're pretty good. But in the sim, I mean, I don't think that would have been four reds. We weren't that low, I, I would have said. Let's get past the Air France. <laughs> and there's the two ship. No, I don't know if we're going to get any signs. I think this is Fox Shop. I think we'll take this, this one here. Sadly, not written anywhere. Right, so text light off. Air Force, uh, 
492 taxi now right on Alpha, hold short Foxtrot. Right on Alpha, hold short Foxtrot, 492. Here we go. Bring it to a stop. Parking brake set. Condition levers. Start feather. And now you let them sit there and cool off for a minute. What a lovely evening flight. Really enjoyed that. And. Shut down. And there we go. Welcome to Basel. Thank you all so much for coming along. Sorry about the mess on YouTube, but I'm glad you could join us here on Twitch. I'll upload this over to YouTube uh, a bit later on. Next up, the replay. Let's see how we did. Thank you to Vatsim and the controllers. Excellent job as always. Really nice vectoring as well. Really impressed with that. I love this add-on. Such a great add-on. If you're on the fence about the Flyers MQ4 XP, it's if you've got X-Plane or you're invested in X-Plane anyway, this is a... I think it's a must-have add-on. It's just really special. Oh, it's just great. Um, but yeah, let's go into the replay. Let's hope this works. I know this is a little bit unstable. For that, all the sounds work and everything. Who would have thought this was possible, eh? Although I am pushing its limits. Here we go, then. So, felt a little bit slow. I'm not convinced about that approach speed. But here we go. Into the flare. Now, to me, I felt like we were sinking really fast here. But actually, we had a little more room than I thought. Yeah. You know, it's funny. The dash is one of the hardest planes to land smoothly. Landing it safely is fine. It's, it's totally normal to land it safely. But if you're trying to get smooth landings, it's it's a little difficult. But ironically, it is also the airplane I've had my smoothest ever landing in. James, thank you so much for $10 tip. Really appreciate it. James, you're so kind. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Uh, James says, great stream as always. Enjoy your evening. James, thank you so much. Thank you for coming along and chatting along with us. Really, really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for your tips. Really very kind. Um, here we go yeah so that's look at this add-on look at the textures anyway um, yeah into the flare and there's touchdown so what was our pitch of touchdown five yeah that's it we were totally out of pitch so what did I do with the power I think I had to increase it a bit so 27 odd percent then I wasn't happy Look at that. Squeezed it all the way up to 40 and held it there and then chopped it back a bit. There was touchdown. Not uncommon in the dash. This bit's a little bit clunky. <laughs> Afterwards, I wasn't, wasn't, wasn't quite <laughs> smooth getting the nose down. But yeah, there you go. That's it. Let's do the good old fly by one. And thank you again, James, that very, very generous uh, tip. Really, really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah that's as good as it gets on the dash and that, that that's not as good as it gets <laughs> and then you see it raise again as i went into disc because the top of the propellers are above you they go into disc they're like a big speed brake and it just drags the nose up there we go right enough of that let's put it back on let's do a wing view what wing view do we fancy it's usually that one i think we go for Yeah, James, well, we might, you know, we might use Twitch a bit more. Um, that is something I've been considering, which might help with the difficulty of setting up streams. And it has some advantages in terms of ease of notification and so on for everyone. But I know some people aren't too keen on that idea because of um, being able to watch it on TVs. So it's something I've been considering. Oh, it's a bit far.
cool right what i'm gonna say then is thank you all so much for coming along today really 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 appreciate it yeah go speed race is not keen on that idea <laughs> um yeah so uh thank you all so much so sorry for the gap in stream so sorry for the mess on youtube sorry for the lack of podcasts all things i need to work on and resolve summer is busy it's proving to be very busy i am going to have a really busy summer for several reasons and um that is going to be a theme of the next couple of months hopefully after that i'm anticipating a much touch wood if things work out as i'm hoping they will a more relaxed winter than than normal which would be good um and would have time to do a bit more of this which would be great so fingers crossed thank you so much for your patience with it thank you for coming along and supporting the channel today it really really does mean the world to me it's so great to have people to sit here and chat with and fly along with uh, and talk to about aviation so um really really appreciate it thank you all so much we'll see you again in another live stream thanks to the moderators thanks for watching thanks for chatting thanks for those very kind tips and we'll see you uh, again soon next time i will plan to be on youtube and twitch at, at the same time next time if this becomes a theme you know we'll see what happens later on but for now we'll be on both so yeah thank you all so much we'll see you next time and uh yeah have a safe evening bye bye